What's up guys, Dre with Overland Tundras and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I got my mechanics gloves on, got my 2015 Toyota Tundra and we are going to be showing you how to change the front driver and passenger wheel hub bearings on your Tundra. It's been making this crazy, almost like an unbalanced wheel noise and a little bit different than your traditional symptom for a bad wheel bearing. But after putting it on the lift and spinning the tire, we could hear the bearings that are just messed up. So let's go ahead and get started on that. We're gonna show you exactly how to do that. All right, let's see if we can make, if the microphone will catch the sound that the bearings are making. That way you can see if you're having the same issue. There it goes. I don't know if the mic can catch that. Sounds like metal clinging in there. So let's go ahead and get those replaced. All right guys, a couple things that you are going to need, the main things you're gonna need for this job are going to be this 39 millimeter uh, socket, half inch wrench, and I will put a link on that. This is off of Amazon. I actually got it same day delivery, so that worked out perfect. 17 millimeter wrench, your impact, a jack, and jack stands are gonna be the main tools you're gonna to need for this uh, hub hub replacement so let's get to it well guys this job turned a lot bigger as you can see i did not know the brakes on this truck were this bad the wheels that i have don't really allow you to see the rotor and it hasn't been feeling terrible now the truck has been sitting for a while but yeah if you could see there is no pad left it is literally metal on metal so i'm gonna have to hurry up and order some rotors some pads so in the meantime what i'll do is just replace the hubs and then we will install the rotors and the pads whenever they come in so what i wanted to do i wanted to cheat and just remove the whole caliper and hang it up um, not knowing that these pads and rotors were in that bad condition so i'm gonna go ahead and just break everything down remove the pads take everything down just hang it up put it aside place the hub i'll just leave the truck jacked up and hopefully those rotors will come in time so let's get to work all right guys to remove these pads we have all these wires that we have to remove remove those wires and then you have two pins on the top that hold the pads in what you have to do is push them out from behind with a hammer gently softly don't mess it up hit those push those pins out and then it releases the pads as you can see it crosses through there holding them in place um, what you want to do also is open your your uh, brake reservoir. That way you can push the piston back in. All right, so we went ahead and removed our side pin. You just literally just push it out. You can push it out with your finger, or if it's too tight on there, get a screwdriver. Then we have our pins. Just hammer the back side, and you should be able to just slide them out. If not, you can get some pliers, and if they're a little snug, just wiggle them out just like that. And remember this one might be a little tighter because it has this spring. And remember which way it went in, that way you can put it back in the same place. So now that loosened our uh, pads, we can go ahead and try to slide them out. All right guys, because the piston essentially is pushed out all the way because there's no pad and it's literally on the rotor, these are gonna be stuck in there. Because we're replacing the rotor, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and compress the piston while it's on here. What I'll do, I don't care about ruining the rotor. I'm going to put a screwdriver in there, hammer it in there, and then get a little crowbar, a pry bar, and push the piston back in. Take the brake pads out, and then we'll remove the caliper, and we're good to go. All right, we'll see if this is a good angle for you guys. A little tight under here, but like I said, not worried about damage in the rotor because we're going to get some new ones. You can see right there. Pistons being pushed in. And now the pad is free. I'm going to leave it on there and compress that piston as best as I can. Because guess what? I don't have a tool to compress the piston, so this is the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. I'm 
Must have got stuck in there. Wow, look at that. That looks terrible. All right, let's compress this side. Need more of a gap. bar here. There we go. That piston is all the way in there. Let's get this pad out. Holy cow. That's actually dangerous. Surprised I haven't heard any squealing. All right, so next we will remove this rotor. We'll remove the rotor and hang it up there. And as you can see, this side actually Hang back out. There we go. Very good. All right, so make sure that you remove this bracket right here because it holds our brake line. And this is right here, a metal brake line. I'm not sure if the camera's capturing that, but that is a metal brake line that you don't want to bend, brake or have any issues with. That's gonna be a 12 millimeter, and then you have your big bolts over here, 17 millimeter. You have one on the top, one on the bottom. Once we remove those, I couldn't find any of my uh, my bungee cords, so I'm just gonna use this uh, tie down, hold the calip caliper up there, and then we'll remove the calip, I'm sorry, the rotor, and move on to our next step. Now these 17 millimeter bolts, I don't think they've ever been touched or it's been a while, they are on there super tight. So I just get the wrench and hammer them out because I can't really get a, a pry bar in here. Jeez, all the mud and dirt it doesn't help either. There we go, bottom. All right, just like that, we got the caliper off. With the screws, I just like to put them back in. That way we stay organized and we don't lose anything because the last thing you need is to lose a screw, a screw, a bolt, and then it's gonna slow you down. So put those back in. We are ready for our next step. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. We're gonna move, remove our center cover here. That's gonna expose our axle nut which is that 39 millimeter. So here you just gotta put a flat head, pry it all around, pop it off, and then we will get to our nut with the cotter pin. So let's go ahead and remove this. Get your flat head and just carefully pry it all around. Make sure you get a good flat head. I grabbed the worst flat head ever. There we go. So then we have our cotter pin here that you want to straighten up. Use your pliers for that, make life easier. All right, so remove the cotter pin. This one was a little too rusted, a little stuck in there, but just finagle it, get it out. Then you have this crown here, and then you have your 39 millimeter 12 point nut. So that it's going to be our next task. So let's go ahead and get our socket and let's play with this one, see how hard it is to get out. All right guys, don't make the mistake I made. I got distracted with looking at the brakes and surprised how bad they are that I started removing them. I should have left them on there and used the brakes to be able to remove this nut because as you can see, there's some rust from all the water, mud and everything that nut is stuck on there. So luckily I was able to, or not luckily, I don't recommend this, but put in a four wheel drive to lock the, the front drive train and just did one hard push and I was able to, to actually break the nut. So don't recommend that, but if you need to do what you gotta do. All right, let's remove this. We'll remove the rotor and get to replacing the hub. All right, this nut put me to work the whole way out. So if you never remove the rotor, essentially what you need to do is 
bang it up all around because it gets seized from all the movement, all the friction, everything like that. So I already went ahead and banged this one. And there we go, just lift it up a little bit. It's definitely hard to do one-handed. There we go. And this is how we look, and you can see there's mud, sand, a little bit of everything on there. So here's gonna be your four, your four uh, bolts that are holding your hub in. And if I'm not mistaken, those are 17 as well. Yep. So those are gonna be 17. So we have one, two, right below it down here, two more. So we're gonna go ahead and take those out. We already have this basically out. Everything will slide. Just be cautious because your, your dust shield will come loose. So just remember which way it goes which is pretty straightforward. So let's loosen those four bolts and we'll get the new assembly in. All right, now we have all our bolts completely out as much as they can come out. You can see you literally can't take them all out because they're back then to this front part over here. So just like your rotor, just gonna have to go around it and bang it to break it free. So we're gonna get our, our hammer and just start banging all the way around and it should break it free. Don't forget to take your nut off. And there we go. We have our hub bearing assembly completely off. What you wanna do is just go in there, start cleaning up a little bit around. Um, if you have a lot of dirt or build up around where it bolts onto, you might wanna clean that up a little bit as well. But we do have our new hub assembly. This is what it looks like. Pretty straightforward, bolt on, pre-threaded bolts. Just go ahead and make sure you do not forget your dust shield, because remember that came off. And make sure you put it in the right place. Make sure it goes in the right direction, just like that. All right, so our heat shield is aligned. We go, went ahead and pushed it in as best as we can, could. And we're gonna go ahead and just hand tighten these bolts making sure everything is aligned and they're going in and then that way you can get your wrench and go ahead and tighten them in there all right guys so this is how everything looks reminder torque everything down you got two bolts up top two on the bottom you have your center nut which is the most important one then you have your crown and then your cotter pin so please please make sure to torque down your center nut that one is about 249 pounds that should be torqued. So please, please make sure you torque that. If not, cotter pin will save you, but because of the force and friction and everything, I'm sure you'll lose a wheel if that's not torqued properly. So we are pretty much done. We're just gonna leave this here exposed like this with the wheel off. Hopefully the, the whole brake kit would arrive soon. I went ahead and got power stop. I've tried a couple different ones. Well, one concept, OEM two times OEM kind of wears out wears the most the I'm sorry wears off the quickest I think they're just the pads and everything is just really soft so I'm gonna try power stop this time and see what happens I got their whole kit front rear and I'll let you guys know how those do but this truck does weigh 7200 pounds uh, I've towed trailers with vehicles on them that didn't have brakes so that just eats up every all the pads and and the rotors so hopefully you guys got some uh some knowledge out of this pretty straightforward i know some of you guys like to work on your truck but don't trust yourself these are pretty straightforward just make sure you have the right tools and you have some time and you'll be good to go so hope you guys enjoy the video catch you guys on the next one